Welcome to Persona Sangrata, a real play D&D podcast that plums the depths of what it truly means to find one's place in a fractured world. In a realm of overlapping planes and mysterious lands, our heroes are burdened with a unique curse. They must embody multiple character sheets, each one representing a different facet of their complex selves. They must grapple with the challenge of reconciling these disparate parts of their identities. And throughout their journey, you'll witness their personal struggles and triumphs as they confront the mysteries that shroud the world they inhabit. From distant realms to hidden dimensions, our heroes embark on an adventure unlike any other, when the very essence of their beings is tested. Join us as we explore the power of narratives and the intricate dance between self-discovery and the tapestry of existence. Persona Sangrada is more than just a podcast. It's an immersive journey into the hearts of our characters and players, driven by the collective creativity of our storytellers. So prepare to lose yourself in a tale of bravery, sacrifice, and redemption. As we unravel the threads of fate, we invite you to embark on this riveting adventure with us, where the boundaries between worlds blur and the power of stories ignites the flames of hope in a fractured land. Now here, we leave a collaborative tale fueled by the magic of improv storytelling. As the dungeon master, I'll be your guide, setting the stage for thrilling adventures. My name is Chris McCarthy. I've been an improv actor and tabletop RPG player since my high school days, but it really took hold of me during college and grad school. Now, as a professor, I run a couple of D&D groups, one of other professors, one of my friends, and this is that second group. But before we get into it, I want to explain some of the dynamics for those unfamiliar with tabletop RPG setups like Dungeons & Dragons. Most of the action happens when a player decides to do something, anything really. They take a 20-sided dice, also known as a d20, and roll that dice to decide the fate of their actions. The higher the roll, the more likely they are to succeed in the daring feats they attempt. You'll witness moments of triumph and heartache as they confront the many challenges before them. From daring escapades to cunning negotiations, every choice they make Will shape the course of our epic narrative. In this realm, I've set the difficulty checks to determine the outcome of their endeavors to be fairly standard. A check of five denotes an easy task, meaning if they roll above a five, success is theirs for the taking. For a more medium task, the check of ten sets the bar, while harder tasks require a roll above fifteen. Venturing into truly perilous territory, our heroes must surpass a difficulty check of twenty. And for the most unlikely of feats, a daunting twenty-five stands in their way. And when faced with the nearly impossible, a difficulty check of 30 will put their skills to the ultimate test. Now, I'm sure some of you are wondering, but Mr. Dungeon Master Chris, how can they roll above a 20? There's only 20 sides to a d20. Aha, you are correct. Throughout the adventure, the characters are going to be gaining certain ability score improvements, and those will be added to their rolls. So they would have maybe a plus 5 to dexterity. And so if they rolled a 20 they would add the plus five and get a 25, and then perhaps doing that very unlikely but not impossible thing. So, dear listeners, I hope that I've prepared you to witness the bravery, the wits, the laughter and tears that our adventurers share with you as they strive to overcome the obstacles that I throw in their way. Prepare to sit at the edge of your seat as our brave adventurers navigate the perils that I set in front of them. So what are we waiting for? Are you ready to experience the thrills of high-stakes dice rolls where destiny hangs in the balance? Join us as we embark on this extraordinary quest, fueled by our collective creativity and camaraderie. Welcome to Persona Sangrata. As the cursed chaos unfolds, our characters must confront their inner demons, forge alliances with their alternate selves, and harness the vast array of skills each persona brings forward. Mm -hmm. Prepare to witness. All right, let's go ahead and let our journey begin. This is Persona Sangratus, Cursed Chaos. First of all, let's go to our introductions section. And without doing any character introduction, which I, I will do for you as we uh, go through the story a bit, let's just talk a little bit about our, our ourselves. So this will be the shortest of our introduction here. Ladies first, Miss Hannah Clark. Great. I don't know what you want to know, but here's what I want to share. My name is Hannah Clark. I've been a role player and enthusiast of board games since I was a child, since I could hold the dice in my hands. Uh, no, I really got into it in college and I started playing with uh, 3.5 and then Pathfinder. Uh, and so I adore role-playing games. I'm really excited to be here. I work in Omaha, Nebraska as a professional actor, and I produce ballet shows, so that's cool. Uh, and I 
think that's it. Is there anything else? I'm a Pisces. Like, what do you want to know? Really, I was just looking for just like your name for the listeners, just so that they would know wow. who Anna Clark is. Well, but you well, know, well, now they know the, too the, much. The, now they're they gonna know a find lot, me, which is Chris. wonderful. <laughs> yes, at at Hannah the Clark, absolutely. Yes, I am at Perfect. Hannah the Clark on the socials. Come talk to me about your dice. Excellent. And ready player number two, Mr. Scotty Schaefer. Oh, hi. I'm Scotty Schaefer. I am also an actor, but I'm based out of Colorado. And I first, I always wanted to do uh, role playing games, but uh, my mom didn't let me when I was a kid. Um, (laughs) So as an adult, I started doing it mostly through podcasting. I think my very first character ever was part of a podcast, which was a fun... So I was like the noob character experience, which is nice. This will still be my first spellcasting character ever, so that'll be so... Uh, <laughs> the, the 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 little wheels are off. I'm going to do it by myself. Um, and um, yeah, and but I, I really love uh, improv comedy, and I love improv stories, and I love stories, and I love uh, dice. I love playing games. So yoo Woohoo! Yay! We're so happy to have you here. Perfect. And rounding us out, Dr. Gregory Moses. Not here in his professional capacity, of course. (laughs) Not as the mathematician we know him and love him to be, but as multiple characters, which we will come to see soon. But Gregory, just a quick little intro from you. Hi. Yeah, as Chris says, I'm a college professor. I'm a co-worker of his, a friend of his for a long time now. I started playing D&D well, a little in graduate school, more now. I'm um, happy to be here. Excellent. And I am your wonderful guide, game master, dungeon master, whatever we want to call it, Chris McCarthy. And just so excited to have three of my most favorite people in the same virtual room as we play this wonderful multi-dimensional, multi-state game. We're crossing state borders. That's how, that's how large and in charge we are. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, good. So let's jump right in. Well, first of all, we have heard a little bit about this in the intro, but one of the novel aspects of our game is that our characters, our our players here are going to be playing multiple characters. So they're going to be playing characters that are inhabiting the same body, but in charge at different times. And so right now, I'm going to have everybody go ahead and roll. If you're a six-sided die, if you have three characters, you know, just split it up to one to two for the first character, three to four for the second. If you've got two characters, just do a simple, you know, flip of the coin or one to three for the first character, four to six for the second character. Okay. I'm rolling a pink dice. It glows in the dark. Oh! Okay. Great. Great, great, great. All right. We're coming in hot. Who do we got? And you know what? I really made this easy on myself because instead of having to do prep for three different characters and backstories and reasons and motivations i got to do eight. yeah that's true sorry chris i like how we're over here being, oh we had to do so much work no mm-hmm. <laughs> i imagine the deluge of backstories so who have we woken up as today oh who do you want to go first let's go with oh, you no. Hannah. see i asked that question and i know the answer Sad <laughs> oh, okay well today we got ourselves so way lou but her friends all call her Lou, uh, and she is a cleric of the sun god soul. Uh, how much do you want to know about Lou? <laughs> like her elevator pitch when uh, she meets somebody at the tavern is trying to convert him? Yeah, absolutely. You could, yeah, just tell about you know kind of where you're from and 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 what you're up absolutely. to. Yeah, I mean that's that's what that's what Lulu's all about. So that's what she'd be talking that's about true. for sure. She would be. Uh, yeah, Lou came from the top of the Sunstone Mountain, which is known by a lot of names now that all of our realities are wibbly wobbly, but it's still the best place in all of the dimensions. And she studied as an acolyte of soul, uh, just, you know, your regular run of the mill temple of holiness and light and violence and blood sacrifices and snacks. It's a great place. Uh, and she's down <laughs> in amongst the common people as a young dragon born. Uh, She's got crystalline quartz, glowy red orange kind of scales. uh, And her Hmm. little quest is called an Ardeo. And so amongst her people, everybody goes on an Ardeo. Think about like a Mormon mission, right? Where you have to go out, you have to work amongst the people. So then you can come back wiser and more appreciative of the boons of soul. So uh, yeah, she's got a sunny disposition and a big sunny golden talisman. 
and she's been working as a healer in this town. And um, that was before all the calamitous stuff happened. And this town is yeah, named... I was it... This town is named Alarkin. Alarkin. A-L-A-R-C-A-N. Alarkin. Alarkin. So Weilu has been proffering her services as a healer, and she's been hearing about children that have been running away. Oh. Missing children, which has seen as a grave violation of Saul's divine plan in her Oh, eyes. yeah. Can't have hatchlings running amok. No, no. Absolutely. So these grieving families have been coming to Suelu. She is at our inn, at our tavern, drumming up some leads in terms of what's going on with these children after a mm. hard day, mending bones and making poultices. Absolutely. And Things have been all sorts real of nasty weird things. ever since all the crazy stuff has happened. But, you know, I think it's just a really gift from Soul because he, uh, he always gives his best and hardest gifts to his best servants. Yeah. Great. All right. We got to find these uh, hatchlings. They can't go missing. No miss out on Sunday school. And that's Lou. Perfect. And that's Lou. All right. Let's continue in the order we came in the intros for the ease of uh, listening, right? It's Mr. Scotty Schaefer, who do we have uh, showing up today? Hello. Okay. So <clears throat> uh, today we have a Flint. He's a wizard, right? Um, he's uh, has a bit of a British accent. Scaredy Cat, he's a, he's a dwarf, and he can't really get hurt easily, but he's still afraid of it, so that's what he's preoccupied with for most moments of his life. He's an orphan, but he, his parents were kind of rich, which has similarities to another rich orphan wizard, but that's, that's where the similarities <laughs> end. No scar, no scar. <laughs> no scar, yes, and no friends really either, so that's why he's oh. just a scaredy cat. Are his books his best friends? His books are his best Nerd. friends. Yeah. I, I can identify. <laughs> he loves books so much that even when his parents died at a young age, uh, he was still like, meh, as long as I can still go to school, I think I'll be fine, really. <laughs> wow. What's he doing in the in Alarkin? So, what is he doing? Oh, uh, having been left behind himself, he has been seeing these posters of these really sad children, and despite the fact that Flint was pretty much okay with being left on the surface at the very least, he still sees there's an overwhelming sense of loss in the town. Maybe some of the characters that he read about when he was you know younger, heroes of his youth, maybe he can help by using his brain instead of his brawn. So everybody everybody seems to look at Flint and think that he's just going to be hitting stuff real hard, but he, he really likes to crack walnuts with his mind right <laughs> yes oh uh, yes mind nuts of course <laughs> <laughs> i love flint that's awesome so there might be a little bit of a chord struck deep down about being lost and forgotten flint is also in the tavern having seen these posters so a little bit of backstory everybody is still just trying to kind of get some semblance of order right you know um everybody's short-term memory is a little hazy they don't exactly remember what happened yesterday or the day before it you know a lot of things have to get pieced together the whole society has been kind of taken a few steps back into more survival mode rather than thriving finding some people to you know take on other people's problems is probably a little harder than it would be in normal times and lastly but definitely not leastly gregory moses who do we have showing up today Showing up today, we have a monk by the name of Fan. He's human, just finished his training, but an older gentleman. He uh, joined the monastery at a late age for various personal reasons. Much like Lou, he has an exercise in learning and an exercise in humility. Initiates of the Dragon Tooth Monastery have to go out in the world and see what wisdom they can glean from other lines of, or let's say, from other faiths or from other belief styles. He is in Adarkin on, well, not a mission, because he's not trying to convert anyone, but for religious reasons. Hmm, I love that. And uh, is it is it fan, like, like F-A-N? F-A-N. Fan. Excellent. Just want to make sure I was pronouncing that correctly. And and while Fan was wandering around the city, somebody just came clinging to him, you know, and they're all dirty and they're in rags and they're just screaming about their daughter and their daughter. And she she was having these dreams and I didn't think there was anything bad. 
and then she's gone. Fan has also been trying to look into what's going on with specifically this one disappeared kid of this seems to be a uh, popper uh, person, right? Mm -hmm. So you guys are in the inn. What do you do? Oh, yeah. Well, Lou's going to take a look around and try to find the friendliest looking person. Who looks the most open? Well, you see a uh, a a figure moving with grace and uh, humility. Uh, looks like a monk. Wow, that person <laughs> looks like they're full of grace and humility. Absolutely <laughs> brimming with it. <laughs> uh, Lou will clank up in her her armor and all of her you know healing stuff and her just a lot of trappings. She's got a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. right? Like if fanny packs had been invented, she would have it. And so just seeing you gliding around and she goes, what's looking good cooking? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And then, no, then says, uh, hello. Uh, my name is a uh, fan. I'm a, uh, I'm pleased to meet you, but... Uh... Howdy! Hey, fan, my name is Sawai Lu, but you can call me Lou if we're going to be friends, which I think we are, because uh, by the look of you, you're a man of devotion and grace and humility. Ah, uh, no doubt. No doubt I am all of those things. I'm, um... I'm looking for somebody. If you've a child, some parent accosted me, and... Oh. I remember that I drank a lot when I was a child, so here I am in the bar. <laughs> right, the that's what I was thinking. The most place to yep. go to Taverns. for this missing <laughs> kid. I don't think I see him, though. Yeah, we, we always had a, a ritual once you were old enough to stand where you we would get all the little hatchlings <laughs> real drunk and then see if they could walk along the super high bridge without falling off. Uh, was sort of seeing if soul would guide you when your mind was addled. Yeah. So I figured maybe, you know, <laughs> that was sort of the same. As you guys are talking about this, there are actually three dragonborn in the corner. They're cloaked. They're definitely smaller than normal. Oh. Trying to drink. Man. Really, we have so much to learn. <laughs> I, hey, well, it looks like there's some tiny little hatchlings right over there. And I um, I see by the dirty handprints all over your garb that you were, in fact, accosted. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we should go talk to those little guys. Actually, wait. I think one of the – there's another little person over there. Oh, do they have a beard? Oh, never mind. <laughs> wait. <laughs> and over there, who do you find but a a meticulously groomed dwarf? <laughs> with earth-toned attire, got a, a subtle air, you know, look, looks over things with, you know, a lot of aloofness. But it looks looks like somebody who has a great knowing of things. Ooh. Uh, beard? Yes, uh, Scotty? Can I help you? Hi! Uh, couldn't help but notice that you have a great uh, air of knowing things. <laughs> and uh, I was just wondering if you've seen any little ones running around, maybe unsupervised. I, I suppose that you're referring to those three over in the corner that are drinking alcohol or something. But uh, other than that, I know I know that there's people missing. I was just reading about it in the paper. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, missing, yeah, missing the folks. local paper. What's that called again? Uh, what's the name <laughs> of the town? Oh, the Alkin... The Alkin Tribune. Well, it, this is a particular journal from the bar called the Alkin Alki, just for people who are in the bar reading. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's why there's a lot Most of Most of it's scratched into the wall, but it's quite good. <laughs> ah, the Alkin Alki. I like that. Yeah, um, it, you're looking for the kids as well? Well, I'd, I'd, like, to, I'd like to try and help. Um, Reasons aren't important, but uh, yes, it, it's a mystery. It looks like it needs solving. Oh, well, this is just a gift from soul on high. I was so looking for some good-hearted folks. For some reason, I just can't keep a handle on anybody. One day, it seems like they're my friend, and the next day, I go up to say hi, and they're all like, you tried to stab me yesterday, and I don't... <sighs> something about this town, you know, lately. So if y'all want a little company, uh, I I'd love if we maybe teamed up and went and costed some teens. I love that the costume teams. As you say that, one of them starts streaking through the inn, runs out, and the other one follows. <gasps> and so now there's one ah! sitting there, and they're doing that, you know, that nod kind of circle, you know, the airplane head nod kind of situation. Uh... 
This is a cultural reference that is above uh, me. Yeah, they're stirred. Yeah, kind of like it's like the Mortal Kombat right before you're going to finish them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, right. Okay. And so yeah, it pretty much means that you know they're they're not they're not all there is what that means. Yeah. Hmm. Curious. So, yeah, we better get over there before they pass out or run. I'll block the door. Oh yeah, you want to block the door, Scotty? Sure, but it doesn't take much to push me over. They just have to look like they're going to hit me. I might duck. <laughs> Over there, you have a dragonborn youth of around what? I don't know when they, when they can stand eight, nine, and dragonborn can actually stand at age three and reach full maturity at age fifteen. Oh, so this kid's probably like five years. I don't know. Five years old. Like All right. Yeah. So they've been yeah. they've been sipping on on cider, uh, but they're still you know they're they're still pretty tipsy. And so, I heard that that I'm was because the Dragonborn had a different calendar than the rest of us, and in actuality, they would be about eight years old, according to legend. <laughs> wow. Well, we do have a special calendar for Soul, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't know much about that. I do know how many sun cycles I have been around for, though, oh. and that's thirteen. So that makes sense. Yeah. Now, Chris, I'm very excited to talk to this drunk child, <laughs> but Scotty did say that he was going to try to block the door. Okay. Please block the so, door. So did, yeah, did these teens bully him out of the way? It oh, sounds like you want at least one already left. Already, one already left. Let's see if you can get the other one. Let's go ahead and do, let's do our first roll. <gasps> so The first roll is going to be a cost yeah, some teens. Oh my gosh, what, would this be grappling even? Yeah, so strength and they'll do a deck save. <laughs> oh my god, he's not very, okay, wait. <laughs> Yeah, I well, like how the two giant so, um, physical people are like, we're going to let him block the door. Yep. Well, he yeah, seems so confident. Let him play the goalie. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's got a low center of mass, which mm. is important for Bounce. this kind yeah. of thing. Oh, yeah. What'd you roll, Scott? Oh, what, what do I need to roll? Above a okay, four. Well, I, I, rolled a, <laughs> I rolled a nine. All but, right. Uh, your nine was using... is enough. Yeah. Using strength. So do you have any pluses or stuff? You probably, uh, probably plus fine. two. So I guess it was an eleven. Yeah. So you got an eleven. Sorry, you said so... you said strength and then dex or something. And I was like, oh wait, which one do I roll? So that's my own fault. Oh, so I was doing a dex save for the strength roll. No worries. Gotcha. You put your arm out and you clothesline this kid real, real nice and clean, like <laughs> absolutely, real nice ah! and proper. Yep, just boom, and they are down. But then they're right back up and they're going, what? Everything's fine. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> They say, My, hey, I'm Mishan. What's going on? Uh, you guys uh, looking party? L looking to party? What, what, what yeah. exactly do you mean by that? Well, you know, it's, everything's so crazy now, and you never know when it's your last night. So, you know, we've been sneaking out of the orphanage and getting drunk. Oh. oh, how old are you, young man? I am, I am 19 and four days According to He's the not. Canarian cycle. <laughs> oh, the Canarian cycle. I don't know that one. Me. I know the Canarian cycle, and you're not. Oh, okay. He's lying. Oh, he's lying. All right, now, Mr. You Nerd, you're probably right. Okay, fine. I'm old enough but, to be but... here. He looks at the barkeep, and the barkeep just kind of like bows his head. He's like, yeah, I forgot Realm's fantasy okay. land. I don't care. Okay. He's got Plus, gold. this young one got away from an orphanage, so he probably doesn't belong to any of the caring parents that we've been mm. talking to. So I don't, but maybe he can give us some information. Is there any, like, hangouts or hideaways? He's visibly dejected by that. He definitely heard Oh, well, that. you know. <laughs> his shoulders just kind of don't Oh, over. hey, we are all children of the Lord. So, you know, you have a brutal and a uncaring father the Lord, but, that yeah, looks upon you. Yeah with a bland and burning <laughs> eye every moment of every day. And if that doesn't comfort you, I don't know what will. <laughs> the eye of Sauron? I've heard of that. <laughs> no, soul, soul. Uh, anyway, I'm I'm going to do like the, like, uh, you know, in 21 Jump Street where they're like, hello, fellow teens. <laughs> I'm going to try to persuade him to tell me if there's any cool hangouts or spots where all of these kids are going to party and drink that's not like the tavern, right? Can I roll a persuasion? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I'll be like, you can trust me. I'm I'm cool, <laughs> which she is not. But I did roll a 17 and I have a plus three to charisma. So that's an unnatural 20. Woo! 
there is a old uh, storage basement that one of the kids has figured out a way to 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 make some poochin. Oh, so my shun says, "Well, yeah, there's there's this place, but you know, you gotta be like really cool. You can't just go there and like just like ask questions and stuff. Like, oh, you, sure." Like, you don't like it's like a, it's like a a parent free zone, you know. Mm. Like no I parent gotcha. over shoulders. Uh, stoop down and whisper in Lou's ear. So is it our theory that these missing children are all just drunk somewhere? <laughs> I doubt that that's the full story, but it's what we got to go on. And I bet you at least some of them were tempted away by the sweet golden liquors of the carefree times. You know, so I mean, it's a lead. Is there any passwords, young man, that you need to say to get in here? Absolutely. The password is boobs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> being a being a six six year old boy. Absolutely. That's very good. He's six. Oh no. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> okay. So he and tells you where it is. You mm-hmm. got to go down this alley. Take a left. Take a right. Uh, you know, go go to this. It's a false door. You gotta knock twice. Sure, uh, sure. Then you gotta wait. Then you gotta shuffle your feet a little bit. Then somebody asks. So he tells you this is whole this whole procedure is whole. Oh, it's a whole thing. Wow, these are some entrepreneurial mm-hmm. teens. Mm-hmm. Do you guys have anything else for the Amishan or can we send him along his degenerate way? Um, I I do actually. Um I'd like to detect if there's any magic or just see if there's anything strange about him other than being a drunk six year old. Smile. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Roll. Smelly drunk. Roll team. for roll for Arcana. Roll for perception or Arcana. Uh, let's want. see. Um, I guess I would do it as an Arcana. I got a fifteen plus mm-hmm. plus five. All right. You get just the tiniest little inkling that there's something magical happening. This he's Mishan's not magical. Mm. It's it's nothing that Nishan's doing, and it's no active effect on Nishan. But there's there's something occurring. Something isn't something's amiss with your read on him. I see. You know, hmm. there's something there's something interrupting your your read on his aura, so to speak. Hmm. So Nishan uh, says, "Well, I gotta go find my friends because uh, either they're fully naked and arrested, or passed out in an alleyway right now." So oh, y'all go. need the yeah. Lord. Okay, you can go, but you gotta take this uh, pamphlet I wrote on a leaf. It'll just tell you a little bit more about what you need to know to really find the light. Okay, just he t- takes t- your pamphlet and he wraps up like some butter and some bread in the pamphlet. <laughs> you can sell. It's like getting like grease stained on it, and he's like. I'm like su- for real gonna go read this yep. afterwards. I'm just yep. I'm just being green, you know. I'm sure. just trying. Yeah, I didn't want to ask for a to go box, so that's Soul all I'm doing here. Loves recycling. No disrespect, <laughs> of course. Perfect. All right, I'll big go. I'll friendship get... point. <sighs> do, you, do we want to go talk to the drunk one, or should we just go check out our lead? Oh, wait, Mr. Studious Dwarf Man, we didn't know your name. Sorry, we just sort of, some teens started running. <laughs> we didn't get to make proper introductions. Oh, right. Um, I, I'm I'm Flint. Um, oh. H- hello. Hello? H- hello, like the thing that you strike to make fire? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Sweet. All right. I like that. This is Fan. Oh. Nice to meet you, Flint. Hello. Gosh, maybe I should go as Foo, and then we'll have a little more of a, <laughs> a like F-F-F. alphabetical. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I'll Alliteration just go as... in the party. Yeah, I'll just go as F U, <laughs> and I'm sure there's nothing wrong with that. Did you guys make your way to this secret hideout? I I think so. I don't think that the drunk kid has got anything more. In fact, probably less mm. than uh, <laughs> old Mishan. I'm going to give him a leaf, though. <laughs> Chuck it under his little knocked out head, for sure. And a All dirty right. look at the bartender. <laughs> mm-hmm. The shit. bartender's thoroughly confused by why they're getting the a The bartender's they're just, doing like, their best in a hard world, Lou. Mm-hmm. you got to be understanding of these things. Wow, that is some... That is some wise depth. Where where did you say you studied? Uh, the Dragon Tooth Monastery. 
Ooh, I love dragons. I am born of one, <laughs> as they say. Very cool. Thank you. And we we chit chat yeah, yeah. about his walk of faith, nice. and yeah, I proselytize a little bit. Your various religious events that you've taken place over over your youth. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Church camps where they took away your watches, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> So you guys find your way to the secret hideout, as it as it is, mm. right? And you you get to the door, and what do you do? Okay, which one of us is going to? Which one took notes? Oh, I <laughs> <laughs> oh I I know about the knocking and the shuffling and the boobs, but I'm just wondering which one of us should be the one to approach the door who looks the most. Which one of us is shortest? Oh, that'd be. I you. believe it is probably you. me. Mm. Uh, then I might as well do it. <clears throat> right, because because dwarven children have beards pretty young, mm -hmm. right? So you could be a all, all right. Get in there, get in there, yeah. And we'll kind of slouch rebelliously. Just don't look like my parents. Well, I'm a dragonborn and he's a human, so that'd be real hard. <laughs> well, that that's that's perfect then. Um, there we so go. Um, knock knock knock, uh, boobs. Come on in. You guys look like some some weird kids, but come come on in. Welcome. And he, he he opens the door, and you guys find yourself in a really damp, you know, mildewy smelling mm. uh, kind of you know. There's there's barrels everywhere. You know, there's there the barrels are rusted, or you know, none of them, they're they're all empty. And uh, and there's uh, this this one kid that answered the door, kind of in these rags. And then there's another kid there, and uh, they're not in great shape. So uh, this this hangout turns out more to be uh, some sort of underground refuge for these these orphans. Hey! And so they say, you guys, you guys been hearing the, you guys been having the dreams about fairies too? Oh, the yep. Yep, and they told me to bring you this bread. So everybody, let's talk about our fairy he dreams. He takes the bread, he smacks the bread out of <gasps> your hand, and he runs away. What? What? <clears throat> what? And then the other one goes, and then the other one goes, they didn't really give you that fairy bread, did they? Oh, no, no, this is normal bread. This is not fairy bread. This is normal did ass bread. the fairies bread. give you the bread? Did they, give, did they tell you in mm. dream to eat the bread? No, no. Why? Is bad things happen if you eat the bread when the fairies tell you to? Every person that I've known that's dreamed about the fairies has has gone missing. Oh, do you know where they do you know where they go? I got no clue. I guess that's uh, the nature of missing, huh? <laughs> yeah. Ber Bernard who just ran away, his 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 uh his adopted sister, she 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 got disappeared, but uh, oh. he was in the same room, but I, he just ran away. I don't know. Oh, I, listen, I just want to give you bread because y'all look hungry. Okay, <laughs> that was it. I was just trying All to be right. hospitable. They take some bread and they kind of sniff it. Mm. It's normal yeah, bread. He, he, he eats the bread. Goes, okay. It's, it's, why is it so Why is it so chewy? It's not hard. <laughs> oh. He like, doesn't understand how to, how to not eat stale bread. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, did you have these fairy dreams? Tiny poor no, child. No, I don't know, and I don't want no fairy dreams. Oh. Please don't give me no fairy dreams. No, 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 not at all. Dang, we need to go find that kid who hates bread. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, real quick, um, this the things you've heard about these fairies. Why don't you tell me what what you've heard so I can remember if it if it if it's the same thing that I heard about these fairies. What what do they look like? Well, or where do they, where were they? Where were they? I mean, they're like they're tiny little things. And if some of the kids say, some of the younger kids say that that maybe they they're taking the the sad kids so that so mm -hmm. that they don't have to be sad anymore. They usually they usually come, you know, it's like the kids, the parents are coming, or people are coming to look at the kids, and and then the kids don't get taken by the parents, and then mm. and then they have the dreams, and then they and then they get taken. Oh. And it's bad. So, I mean, it's basically adoption, right? I mean, that's <laughs> what they want. They want someone to take them, maybe. But we never hear from them again. There'd be no way, no way that Ace's sister would just leave him like that. She loved him. 
Mm. They were best friends. She'd never just go. She'd at least leave a note or something. He said that she didn't take any of her toys or her blanket mm. or her stuffy. Nothing. Mm. It was just gone. Well, you just said his name was Bernard. And now you're saying his name is Ace. So <laughs> something suspicious, child. No, I know. I know his name is. Okay. Names are uh, weird recently. His, his middle name's Ace. Mm, all right. I call him Ace true. because he's only got one big toe. Okay. It's a weird <laughs> oh, accident we don't like to talk about. Bernard Ace. The Ace of Base. <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for this information. Yeah, it seems like we might be getting a little, a little bit of a spirit in a way. Yeah, mm. something. The sad kids. He but drops you're not. in the in the in the puddle in the in the in the basement. That he goes. It's fine. It's fine. Picks it up and it's oh, like no. this gross standing water. And he's like, it's okay. He like rubs it oh. off on his shirt and he eats it still. It's. It's, okay. it's just this is what, you don't you don't you don't like to see this it. is why we need to start letting kids into bars if we don't let them into bars they get drunk in <laughs> gross mildewy basements instead hey i'm i'm all about it just getting drunk in church <laughs> right that's the real deal right mm. there okay then we can really keep an eye on them uh okay so he tells you, he, he goes, so he goes, Ace, he, he says, I do know that Ace got a hideout on the on the roof uh, of the orphanage. So you You're guys can probably mind, go kid. find him there. He's got yep. a he's got a secret, secret place where three roofs come together. Wait, Absolutely. Did Ace run out of the building? Yeah, Ace was the one that ran. He was the first one that ran. You've been talking to this other kid. Mm -hmm. for right, but I was envisioning him running into the further in deeper in is what i had also thought but that's okay so he ran out i mean yeah, maybe there's out. a ladder deeper in that leads up i don't know yeah that's true he 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 disappeared how about that well, we're gonna follow i actually go up to his yeah go, go to, to his little his secret little hidey hole go yep. to secret hidey hole all right invading children's personal space <laughs> and so and so starts the first stakeout for this uh this completely unplanned character. So, uh, so you guys hang out there, <laughs> and then uh, Ace comes around, and he goes, "Are you? Are you guys? Are you guys from the shelter? What? What are you? What are you doing here?" Hey, we're looking for your sister and everybody else who's been taken, and we think you might know something. My sister. They said that she just ran away, but I know it's not that she never run away. Mm. She never go without me, ever, ever, ever. Absolutely. Uh, uh, I mean, you seem like a really good brother, so your instincts spot on, kid, spot on. We think that she might have been uh, taken by the fairies, and we aim to be getting her back, but we need your help. So he starts crying. He goes, I was worried about that. She told me that there were these these dreams of fairies and she asked me to stay oh. awake while she was sleeping because she said that she was gonna get taken and i tried to stay awake and i couldn't oh and i fell asleep i'm used to dealing with and children then when i woke up what? i saw her floating oh. through the window and then she was gone and nobody believes me everybody's telling me that it was a dream i didn't actually see her floating but i saw her floating you sure i did. saw her yeah. floating. yeah y'all i'm used to working with children who were a lot more like grounded you know mm -hmm. like by by age two the the kids up at the temple are like hunting and gutting with their teeth so this kid's little you know but I, I think that we should stake out the orphanage and see if we can follow any more floating kids hmm and that might be the next move you know if they're if they're getting taken ace 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 goes i'll i'll be anything to help my sister i i will be the person you want to be our the bait? The fairies can come Ace. take. He says, I've been dreaming about the fairies, so I'm worried anyways. Okay. So our, yes. our number one, our master bait. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. I, I think this is a plan. All right. Okay. So Ace tells you that uh, he goes, I... I I used to not have a room by myself, oh, but now it's a room by myself. Come here, bring it in. <laughs> but but it's it's on the first floor, and, and there's a window not too far. You guys could probably look. 
uh, you know, the, the, the walls aren't too bad, but, but there are patrols. So, you know, because of the fact that kids have been missing, the town's been issuing patrols. So just want to oh. warn you guys about that. Because, you know, sometimes when we're sneaking out to the bar, or, or our, our tab, or you know, or our shelter. We we gotta be sure, careful. We don't want to look patrols. like the ones who are taking the kiddos. Mm -hmm. No, no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah, there we go. All right. Well, you gotta think sad thoughts tonight, which won't be hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will. What do you guys think? He's like, you know, who love sad stuff. Oh, well, that explains it. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry. We're uh, we're a couple of well trained. A good Samaritans, kiddo. So you'll be fine. Do you guys think that we should like wait on the roof? Wait in the room? I say we maybe even st uh, wait in, in different places. Like one in the room, one on the roof, uh, one on the street or something. Or maybe another. I like that. Maybe another is hidden or something. I also have an idea yeah. to to uh, try to eliminate by process of elimination, find out what exactly what's happening. So I suggest that, that, uh, that we, first of all, we, we just do something as old fashioned as, as tie a rope around his foot <laughs> to the bedpost so that he can't, he said, you know, at the very least he won't I love get taken that. too well. Then I'll, I'll also try to detect some magic when it happens. And does anybody else have any other skills that could help make a trap or find something or see what can't be seen? Um, yeah, well, I can, uh, I can sort of do this thing where my mind whispers to somebody else's mind when I can see them. So that might be helpful for lookout needs, you know? Yeah. Or to help console uh, the child while to let him know we're still perhaps. there while he's being taken. Yeah, in his brain, I can be like, it's okay, we got you. Don't worry. The hand of soul is ever upon your shoulder, red hot and burning. Wait, wait, yeah, what's, yeah. real comfort and stuff. Was she? Uh, is he still there? Can we ask? Um, was your sister awake when she was floating out the window, or was she screaming and clawing? Or no, she was. She was. This, ah. She was asleep. She was snoring. She was as, as peaceful good, good, as, good. As, a, okay. as a little babe. I volunteer to be the person out on the street. That's where I want to be. Um, the room like under the window. The room has two beds, but now it's only one bed that's occupied. Is that right? Oh, so maybe I, I could lay down as a pretend right. child right. in this in this bed. <laughs> I love that. Um, yes, <laughs> as our resident um, dwarf. Yes, I'm not putting on a bonnet on though. I'm just going to lay down. <laughs> All right. <laughs> could you could could you snuggle a stuffy? Well, I might I might have yeah. one of my own. Who knows. And that leaves the rooftop <laughs> for Mr. Monk, which is All right. so appropriate. As it should be. The first few hours pass. What are where exactly are you outside of their room? I want to be underneath the window. So near the underneath wall. Underneath the window. Okay. Underneath the window, maybe looking like I'm trying to like, have you heard the good news about soul? <laughs> like, like that. Oh, that's the reason that I'm there. Oh, perfect. Got it. You have to make, maybe have a clipboard. You're trying to get signatures yep. or something. Mm, Absolutely. Yep. There's nothing better. Okay. Mm -hmm. So especially uh, if it's night. So go ahead and let's do an intense eye stare off between you and the patrolling guards. And let's see if you can out intense them. Like you're poaching oh, yeah. outside of Trader Joe's trying to get signatures. <laughs> and let's see if you can get them to just completely look the other way. I love it because they'll be like, no, no, no. Well, we're not, oh, we're not going to do Once with we her. start talking to her, it's going to be three mm -hmm. hours. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, what do you want me to roll, Chris? Uh, go ahead. Roll uh, performance. <gasps> Ooh. Could I argue that it is, in fact, uh, religion. Yes, oh. I will let you go with religion. I'll let you get your extra proficiency. Thank you. All right. 14 plus 3, 17. All right. That beats an 11. Perfect. So yes. they look at you, and one of the guys starts walking over, and the other guy, like, grips him, like, the elbow death grip, <laughs> and he's just like, no, no. Like, I'll I'll buy you a coffee. No, we're not dealing with it. <laughs> and so... Where are you going, uh, lads? Have you heard about the light? <laughs> okay. So they leave you on on your way. Right. Perfect. All right. And Fan, go ahead and do a perception uh, check for me. 
What do your monk eyes Perception, see? Perception, 16. All right. So you, it's it's almost like the colloidal effect or the Tyndall effect where you can see like dust particles in the air. Like you're starting to see little things like flitting around. But as soon as you look at them, you can't see them anymore. It's kind of like in your peripheral. All right. And uh, let's see here. I'll get better with the names, I'm sure. Flint, mm. I'll go ahead and roll a perception check for me. Perception check. Um, Seven plus zero. Nuts. Maybe I'm sleepy. Mm, this right. bed is you, much you, comfier you than are... I thought it was. <laughs> yeah, you are, you are still sleeping. And slowly the window begins to open. Reeking as it moves. So go ahead and roll one more for me. Be kind. And it is creaky. You fell asleep. Is this perception? Fall asleep. Did you stay asleep? Yeah. Uh, wisdom. Yeah, Do perception. I rolled a 17. Or, or a which, 17. Which... All right, perfect. So yeah. you hear the... And, and, and you're, you know, just conditioned from youth, whatever you hear, a window opening, uh, you just automatically jump up, Right. And so as a result, you know, you, you, you can hear, you can see what's going on, but you don't move at all, but you, you kind of like bolt a little bit and you open and you can see moonlight shining through, uh, the window and, and, and it pulls onto the sheets above, uh, Ace's body, right? And Ace's body starts to move, starts to float, rise above the bed. And as it starts to flow, it's almost like it's coming like a black and white movie or like the the resolution of of ace is, is hmm. deteriorating somehow colors being oh. reached they're becoming almost translucent and then just carried by like a gentle breeze they float out of the window and right past uh lulu so lulu you uh. got uh so go ahead roll a perception check because at this point ace is mostly translucent so it's actually pretty difficult to see Cool. Unless Can my monk buddy it. fan also get a perception? Yeah, I'm yes. He's floating out the window. Can we both be looking? Yes. Let's look. Okay, so well, I'm perceptive. I get a what? The twenty-two. Oh, nice. That's great because I got a twelve. Mm -hmm. So you have noticed some 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 layout and formatting issues in your flyers. <laughs> that's, that's, you're focused on that. You're like, oh, that's oh, the no. reason why these aren't working. It's because it's confusing. I need to reprint these. This and sun so... looks like a butthole. <laughs> <laughs> now I know why the kids were laughing at me. And so, but Fan, you, you know, you've been looking at the, you know, these little kind of flits in the peripheral. And so your eyes have already adjusted to the dark. And so you can see this floating and you can see it's the shape and size of Ace. It's got a blanket over, you know, most of it. Uh, the blanket's kind of just hang, hanging down, um, and it's just just floating away. Okay, well, so I guess what I'm do you what do you all do? Not contributing much on the roof, so I'm gonna hop down and elbow uh, elbow Lou and get her attention. All right. What? Okay. What? Oh, oh, blanket monster! Blanket monster's taking the kid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I well, wait, wait. Where I, I should have asked this. This window's on the ground floor, so this kid should be floating, like yeah. So like I, six feet off the ground, or something. Okay, so yeah, so I do that, and I elbow Lou, and then I try to grab the kid. I guess. So oh, yeah. y you, the body is moving a bit too fast for you to actually get. Uh, a finger on it, right? Mm. So you kind of try it, and it's it's doing this thing where it kind of looks closer than it is, you know what I mean? So like it's you're like it's right there, and then you put your hand out, and then all of a sudden it's like you blinked and it jumped three feet or whatever. So it is it is very inexorably leading away from oh. town into into uh, the forest that's on the outskirts of Alarcon. Flint. Flint, jump out the window. We got to hot foot it after the kid. Come on. Here I come. I also want to, well, I don't know. I want to run like a magic check or something. Like as I'm as I'm running after this thing to be like, what the heck? Or I'm not sure if it's investigation or something, but just like 
what like can I glean anything extra from what you've just told us by like maybe I'm looking yeah. at the rope is the but, rope that's on his well wait is there a rope I thought we tied a rope maybe I forget maybe we talked just... about it I don't remember anybody actually damn doing it, it. Uh, you're one of those yeah. DMs wow. okay fine uh, so, I don't know what <laughs> now roll roll an arcana though see if see if you can figure out well the, yeah maybe uh, okay so I rolled a twelve plus five so I rolled seventeen um. Maybe I'm looking at the blanket. Is the is the blanket affecting also, or you read once in a book about uh, fey disturbances? You heard uh, an old old fairy tale song, kind of like a you know the ashes ashes we all fall down kind of thing, talking about when you see the fairy at night, run away, sleep at bright, make sure that there's lots of light around, and that these translucent bodies are turned translucent on their way to the fey rock you know from the weird children's song that this is like you're in the middle of the middle of a kidnapping mm. is what you see that's what you can you can believe okay okay so we're running through the town after this floating kid. already in the woods the kids enter the woods mm. is the kid asleep by yell at him kid's totally asleep Mm. It's totally asleep. You try to yell at him, he doesn't wake up. Is the blanket throw still a hanging dart off of him? at him? Blanket's still uh, hanging on him. You throw a dart at him, uh, it misses. Mm. As you enter, as gotcha. So we can't make mm. physical right. contact. We're running into right. the woods. Great. Uh, as we run, I'm going to cast light on the head of my mace. So nice. there's a lot of light around us, just in case. Go ahead and the other two roll a perception check for me. Nine. Eight. Eighteen. All right. I have dark vision, so... so the light was like, ah, I can't see things too well all of a sudden. Exactly. <laughs> so tripping over stumps. Right. And... Sorry. And so that actually does make sense that the only person that notices this is Fan. Uh, and so Fan notices that the plants are lighting up around Ace's body. Just very faintly. Um, but there it's, it's, his body is, is having an impact on the environment, right? Hmm. Um, and, and you guys, it's not hard to keep the body. Well, it's, it's somewhat hard to keep the body in view. So you guys are kind of struggling your way through, you know, somewhat difficult terrain. It's, it's, it's taking a bit, you know, it's not like you're just you know, running for a few minutes. It's, it's, has it been 15 minutes? Has it been 25 minutes, mm. right? Like, Ooh, we don't man. know. Um, until you get to uh, a clearing. And this clearing, and Ace is already there. Uh, they are in a puddle, asleep still. And the puddle is glowing brightly. Hmm. Woo. Fan. Woo. Wait up. Oh, wow. You're faster running. Woo. Come on, Flint. We found him. Very He's in a glowing dangerous puddle. short distances. I mean, I tried to grab him out of the puddle. <laughs> As the last of you gets there, Ace sinks through the puddle and the <gasps> light begins to dim quickly. I jump into the puddle. All right. Person. You jump into the puddle with the rest of you do. Fan oh, in the puddle. Soul protect I, us. All right. I, uh, uh, in the puddle. I, I throw I throw a rope to them. You throw a rope in the puddle? Yeah. Throw a rope in the All puddle. right. The rope goes in the puddle. Nice. And I, I, I well, I mean, and I hold onto the rope and I'm like, here, take this. You're fishing. So I hold I'm holding onto one you're end. Fish, yeah, you're fishing. And I'm hoping because this way if they can get him, then we that. can all get back out again. Or if something pulls him really strong, then maybe I'll get pulled in too. But at least I'm on the ground. <laughs> that's a that's a wizard mm -hmm. move right there. Mm -hmm. So Flint does that, and so he's sitting there holding his rope, just kind of fishing, right? And the the and the hole is dimming very fast. Like the glow is 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 lessening and lessening. It's it's almost gone. You two, <clears throat> Fan and Lulu, pass through this portal. There's a moment of disorientation. You can't tell which way's up or down, dark from light. Your head spins, and then you're in a completely different space. Ooh. 
So no longer are you in the drab clearing in the moonlight. Now the sky bathes you in a twilight glow. Clouds are moving across the sky at different speeds, first fast, then slow. And there's brackish water lapping at the shoreline of an islet that you're standing oh. on. And the island is standing in this water that's vaguely iridescent, like the wings of a dragonfly. Mm. And the roots of the tree that grow out of the shallows of the water are like thin stilts holding massive trees over the water of a swamp. Wow. And you see Ace is there about 10 feet from you, but they're not alone. Gregory, those things that you were getting a little bit of a you know, peripheral view of are surrounding Ace, flitting around and chittering to one another. As soon as they notice you, they go completely silent. And then they flee. They fly away? <gasps> yep. Do, uh, do? do we see the rope? That, uh, yes, you see the rope. So if you want, you can. Yeah, kinda, I'll give like you can you two can... sharp tugs. Ow! On the rope. I, what, hey, was that? What does that? Does that mean? What does two tugs mean? <laughs> we you didn't talk about what tugs mean. <laughs> she, she... <laughs> oh, sorry, I, I pulled very hard. Uh, duh. <laughs> oh, uh, I think Flint wants us to come back up. Try to lay a, a hand yeah, on the. Yeah, I try to come there, back saying. to the kid. The kid wakes up. Did we? Did we make it? Are we here? Did we? Did we find my sister? Where? Where is she? Renata? Where is she? Uh, uh, work in progress. Work in progress. <laughs> Calm down. She goes. I'm not leaving without Renata. You can't I leave don't me. Go. I'm not going. I manhandle of course, the of kid course. over <laughs> and <laughs> roll a by the check. rope. <laughs> Let's see how slippery this yeah, kid is. Yeah, I think we should keep going. <laughs> the kid should go back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I. Um. Well, for slippery kids. Three. Well, he got an. Oh yeah, 20. he will be pretty. So swampy. he is. He 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 is. Bobbing and weaving. <laughs> oh I mean, you're shoot. Getting juked, you know, like uh, like you're a wide receiver. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so yeah, you there, there's no way to to even lay a hand on Ace. Ace is like, dang kid, you got some. He moves. does like a moonwalk for you, like he's he's full of it. Um, absolutely. <laughs> ace is an ace. Okay. So he says we gotta go find Renata. She would do the same for me. All right, all right, hold on, hold on. Hey, uh, fan, since we can't get the kid up, I think we better get our dwarf down. <laughs> you wanna hold on? This yeah, way yeah. Let's fishing? drag him down. <laughs> Yeah, we both just like pull really hard. All right, so your combined strength. Yes, okay, please. so you guys combine strength pull, and it's a tug of war. What do you do, uh, uh, Flynn? Do you do you tug of war? Or do you do, do you find? No, I thought that they, I was waiting for another little tug of communication because I th I thought that it was a tug. Two tugs <laughs> means something, so I was waiting for maybe three tugs means yes. I don't know. So all of a sudden, I go whoop, <laughs> and you hear whoop, <laughs> and I go right in the water. <laughs> Nice. Um, <laughs> Perfect. <coughs> Excellent. Sorry, Flint. We didn't talk about the tug system no, before we, we went not. in. I that was my sick. bad. <laughs> Sorry. That'll be, we can let you decide the tugs next time, but it looks like we're in the spooky, swampy layer of whatever's been taking the kiddos. And also, Ace is one slippery little, little tadpole. Oh, my good gracious. Yeah, we tried to get him out of here, but he's not going, man. That's great. He goes, can't touch this. Da, 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 da. <laughs> he does a little dance around. Amazing. So he goes, Do you guys know what those do you guys know what those things were that were around that were around me? I saw them just for a second. Me too. Can I do a religion real quick? Uh, you can do a nature or an arcana check. Wah, wah, wah. No religion. No religion. No, mm -hmm. religion. But that's my strong Yeah, thing. you you class <laughs> yeah, a bunch of heathens. Nature or arcana. I have nature arcana. I want to do an arcana check. You didn't see oh, them. I, I have right. a three plus five. I'm disoriented. Indeed. And Andy didn't so, see being, them. And you did not see them. Yeah. So you're being told them second hand. So yeah. you're so you you're like I'm pretty sure these are Himalayan. Yeah, I didn't I didn't even hear what he was saying. I was getting the water, the brackish water, out of my ears. 
Well, I got a 16 on an educated <laughs> guess. What will that get me? Very little. Very little. He says, nope, I don't think it's Nats, and I don't think it's <laughs> whatever you said it was, Lulu. That that seems wrong. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. And so, and he said, but I did see them go that way. And he points to, and then there's like an obvious clearing. All right. That, that uh, a clear path lies before you. Uh, to the next island. There's a thin bridge of land. Mm. Um, uh, it's kind of made of land, and it's also mm. made of like tree roots at times. Um, so you guys are crossing the bridge to the next cool uh, island. Yeah, let's go. As you step off of the roots and onto the solid ground of an island, you find yourself walking through a sea of flowers. Some are familiar to you, though they grow in unnatural colors. Mm. Blue roses, red violets prismatic daisies with each petal a different shade while others are completely alien strange shapes and brilliant hues more notable though are the poppies mm. that are grown here and there each at least three feet tall hmm. they sway enticingly in a light breeze and little motes of glowing pollen float off of them wow. fascinating those are be beautiful yeah can I do a nature check on the and... on the on those uh flowers? Those poppies? You can <laughs> But before you do that Before you do that, they try to mess us up. <laughs> you are hit with some kind oh. of blood force <gasps> across your face, and you take one point of damage. Only oh, one point of damage. What? Ow! Wait, what happened? Something something just came across my face and ow. Oh, I feel I feel like one point of damage. I feel like one Sorry, eighth of my life terrible. has been, been drained from me. I mean, it's just been drained from wow. me. Wow. <laughs> All right. High alert. Perception. Eighteen. There is Nothing immediately obvious. There's there's nothing that you can see. Fan, look alive. We got some smackers <laughs> or some attackers out here in the field. I look alive. Where are you all in relation to the poppies? How close well, or far are you? I mean, I feel like they're they're kind of everywhere, but but if you want to be, you could have been far away from that. Just let me know. Where are you? I figure we're on the path. And there's maybe like the the first mm -hmm. of the tall poppies has somewhat appeared in our vision, and I took like one right. step towards it. That's when I got right. smacked. Okay, perfect. After you get smacked, do you want to resist being? So you're starting to feel oh. really, really sleepy. Do oh. you want to resist feeling sleepy? This sleepy feeling, I'm just asking since it's related to a plant. Is it a poisonous thing? Sleeping poison? You mm. don't exactly. Well, I'm just saying know. because I have, I have, uh, I'm a, I'm a dwarf, so I have uh, so, some, 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 some stuff. Yeah, You're immune to poisons, resistance, and I a think resistance. I have. A... So if anybody's going to roll the dice, I think it should be. Yeah, you, right? I have the, the resistance and the choices. Well, that's what I. This is also what I'm trying to like. So yeah, I think I have a advantage on it. So I rolled a twelve and eighteen. So I have A against poison. So I think I have advantage against it. So so you make the saving throw, and you do not go to sleep. Whoa! That was crazy. You, you, you're, you're, you're like, it's like a narcoleptic attack. For just like a second, your eyes close, and you just kind of fall asleep for a second, and then, you, oh, wait, back up. And then... Oh, you all right there, Flynn? Lulu. Whoa! <laughs> gets hit for five damage. <gasps> oh, and then... So uh, you, Lou, get, you get smacked by just some blunt bludgeoning oh, uh, smack. That's all you can goodness. feel. I step uh, back out of the clearing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Ow! The and so you're still within five feet of the poppy plants. Do you want to resist going to sleep? Man, not if I just took five damn. Yes, I will resist going to sleep. 
a string of the Pirates most foul profanity. Constitution saving throw comes out of Lou's mouth, and she goes, "How oh, sorry, those are all words I learned <laughs> huh. from the orphans." All right, uh, saving throw, Constitution. You said, "Yep, sixteen. A sixteen. Okay. Oof. So you fall asleep. Uh, yes, while while swearing. <laughs> <laughs> but instead of falling asleep, asleep." You awaken in a place where it, it, you know, you've read about this before, you've never experienced it, but this is a place where the ethereal realm makes contact, an over, overlapping section of it with the, with the plane of the fairy. And what you see is a giant, 30 foot tall, six legged mushroom monster. That is got spores coming out of it, Whoa. and has a bunch of uh, darkness uh, underneath its its you know mushroom umbrella things, right? And um, so you you can finally see this oh. thing. You can see these arms that were just hitting you. Amazing. Okay, Sol Defendus. Two questions. One, can I still see my compatriots even though they are separated by the veil of the ethereal plane? You can see them, but you cannot uh, communicate, talk to them. Oh, no. I can't like talk to them, but one might say that uh, I could send a telepathic message to any creature I can see within 30 feet. Oh, 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 oh that's if my anybody's going to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right, all right, Smart. all right. So I like it. Yes, you can see them. Here in, so Lou, to them, she looks like Lou's just asleep, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. You guys here in your heads. Oh, my God. Fall asleep. Fall asleep and come help me. Fall asleep and come help me. It's giant I'm mushroom. I'm tired. <laughs> snort the flower and fall asleep and ah! and that's and we can't message. talk back right it's no. not a walkie talkie okay right. no not this version of my power no a, a normal message spell mm. you would be able to respond but this is this is just something and you can roll an easy insight check to see if it's actually lulu or if it's like somebody else, kind of <gasps> Lulu. pretending. Lulu, you know I, mean? well, I love just, that. Just, mm. yeah. That's my name now, Lulu. Yeah, it's just. <laughs> I I rolled uh, with modifiers a nine. You're uncertain, <laughs> so I am still yeah. what fey magic sleepy or something. But but it would make sense. It would make sure. sense and to I... be like, well, I was definitely hit by something. And yeah, I want to hit I by, like, see essentially, yeah, a sleep attack, right? A psionic attack. So mm -hmm. now you're hearing voice in your head, which you've never mm. heard before either. I mean, she told you about it, but you never experienced it. Um, now, what Fan about uh, has Fan? not mm -hmm. experienced a sleep attack yet? Well, no, but but it has Fan, uh, what is, did he roll an insight check? Does he think it's actually Lulu? She. If you want me to roll insight, I got a 26. So probably perfect. All right. So you Damn. yeah, you 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 know you, when you guys were talking about your religious experiences, Lulu talked about how uh you know a mentor of hers had, you know, parted information in a similar way. So you're like, oh yeah, no, I know that she can do this. So you're not, you know, freaked out by it or sketched out by it. And so she tells you to go to sleep. Snort the flowers okay. and go to sleep. Snort no. the flowers and go to sleep. And you know Don't that it's trust her. Trust her how snort the flowers if that's a thing. The first trusting action of our little baby party. I love it. All right. So you go up and you smell the flowers <laughs> and uh, you do right. not resist going to sleep, I assume. And you fall right asleep. And then you wake up in the uh, ethereal realm uh, where you see Lulu and this giant uh again it looks like it's like seven mushrooms have just been like kind of like fused together and all their little legs are coming out and some of them were tendrils that are trying to go out and they're trying oh. to attack one of the one of them's got ace all, all wrapped up they, they they got ace yeah exactly so what oh, no. I'm looking so tough now are you ace um 
<laughs> He's slippery. Couldn't help him now. Is Lou in a cage in combat with this thing? Does she look like she's about to be? It does. It does. I think so. She she spent her action before combat to try to get you guys back, get you guys into the into the fight. But yeah, we're about to. We can we can definitely enter combat if you oh, want. I don't right know. Now. I mean, I You're called to assume lose. this thing is looking for a fight, but I don't like. Oh, I mean, you just smacked your friends, <laughs> both of them. Mm-hmm. So yeah, okay, your new friends. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. I took five damage, beans mm-hmm. and biscuits. Okay, I'll move up beside her then. <laughs> All right. Okay, but okay, let's roll initiative. So let's you th- uh, you just you two roll initiative. Okay. And then we'll we'll well I because I want I, I just didn't want to interrupt Yay. I also want to want to breathe and and so sleep. You didn't hear it, but, but you maybe, see fan maybe I might be on the next just turn. Go up to these flowers and, or... and sniff a bunch of them and then just pass out. So do you mm-hmm. put? Oh no no no! no oh, I still heard I still think... heard Lulu. I just That's didn't. Right. I was like, okay. mm, did, you really did I really hear okay, that? But you do it anyways. Awesome. So you yeah. are there as well. Yeah. But then, but then I but then I see I, I see I see him go so I'm like okay I'm gonna go ahead and do this too so I go okay, smell it great. we're all in the ethereal plane I see how this goes ahead and okay. all roll initiative Woo! there's a fungus among Woo! us I got eleven yeah oh! we got our slippery boy eighteen mm-hmm yeah <laughs> we just rolled for initiative. Nice. One Amazing. natural oh, one. Oh my goodness! I'm so excited that the first character that I play is my spellcaster. I was like, man, it's gonna take a while for us to get to Lou, and I mean, I want to hmm. play with all our spells. And soul Here is kind. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Wait. So, Chris, I do have a question. Um, one of the, one of the things I wasn't sure with my characters right. because I figured they'd be wearing the same clothes. Um, one of them came with like chainmail, but the wizard couldn't wear the chainmail, yeah. but he could wear like some other medium armor. Would, I had asked if it was yeah. cool. Yeah, I had to... some other armor, totally. like medium I mean, honestly, armor or I'm something. Fine. I'm fine um, with you wearing chainmail. We can, we can. I had to mess around a little with so you can... armor too. Like my oh, okay. Paladin came with chain, but was not strong enough to wear it. So. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I have that Lou mm. has armor, but the other two take it off because they don't use oh, okay. her armor. But she has like a note that's like, whoever keeps leaving my armor mm. at the side of the road, like, please stop. <laughs> and so they'll just pack it up. But she's the only one who like, she's the pack horse of the three. She has like all this stuff and everybody else is like, why? Why with all this stuff? <laughs> anyway. There you go. So I think you just, you wear it when you're that character mm-hmm. and when you're not, you don't wear it. There you are. I like that. What's the mushrooms initiative? The mushroom got a nineteen plus one. Boo! So, um, and tell me, oof, uh, who has dark vision? Okay, uh, I don't. I do. But Hana has still got her I mean, light I spell. Do not... I assume. I oh, you still do. have your light spell. Yes. Okay, great. My Perfect. mace is still emitting the sweet holy light of soul. Yeah. So regardless of the light spell, there's still a shadow um, that is uh, within five feet of this mushroom guy. Uh, so yeah, hmm. the, the, it, un, hmm. unnaturally so, the light spell will not pierce through that that darkness. Okay. Um, wow. So so we uh, can see like is this meaning that we can see the general like form of the monster? But it's hard to like get a read on his exact steez because of the darkness. Um, it's more flavor than anything. Great, thank you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> good question. Mm. More flavor. I was just asking, like, oh, are we talking disadvantage? Yeah, yeah. What's going on? Mm-hmm. Great. Yes, good question. Good question. Mm-hmm. Well, there we I go. Could, I could like, just mm-hmm. describe what I see to be like. Oh, it has. It seems to have a delicate yeah, underbelly yeah. that you can't see in the dark. I don't know something. <laughs> it has a series of three <laughs> testicles. If we each grab and squeeze, of course. mushroom balls. I figured it out. All right. Well, he <laughs> has uh, multi attack, Lilu Dallas, and he is going to come at. Um, he's going to come at Fan, and 
he is going to oof crit success on a first attack. Ah! My goodness. Whoa, whoa, we whoa. But, oof. But okay, uh does five damage. So five damage to fan. And the second attack, which is going to be to Flint. That is going to be a 12. Oh, no. That probably does not hit your armor class, right? All right. Perfect. Uh, does not. No, armor Sand, class is 16. Oof. You are poisoned. You take an extra two damage um, because it hits you with a melee attack. So when it hits you, the spores are poison you. Sorry. Yeah, so, um, but you are up. Ouch. It is uh, your initiative. So, I mean, this, it's a mushroom. Can it move? What's its attack? It can. It uses, uh, it has, like, it's standing on two mushroom stems, and then it's got two or three extra mushroom stems that it's, like, used. It's kind of like water bending them mm. to attack with those. So it's, um, it's do it's doing just bludgeoning hmm. attacks. Gonna attack, I guess. Do you punch Roll it? Are you one of yeah, those what are you monks? gonna do? No. I'm using a hmm. sword a monk weapon. Fifteen. Nice. Uh fifteen hits. Go ahead and roll for damage. Eight points of damage. All and right. I'm Excellent. going to make an unarmed strike. I'm going to get, uh, that's a monk thing. I'm going to get a nat 20, which mm -hmm. I would rather have got in yeah. on, the, on the sword with the better hit die. But let's <laughs> see what yeah. we do. Woo. Six points of damage. <laughs> Nat 20 slap. Ooh, nice. Six points of damage. <laughs> All right. Nice. Um, How's it looking? How does it look like that That did for him? It, it did a little bit of damage. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's not, oof. It, okay, so it cut off part of one of the tentacles that it was attacking. Okay. So now it has like two and a okay. half tentacles left. Okay. Yeah, go fan. Show them how humble you can be. Woo! There you are. Yep. <laughs> Wait, so you just judo chopped half a tentacle <laughs> off. That's pretty impressive. You started that's it with a good, your sword, mom, yeah. you judo chopped, you finished it. However, I like it. when you judo chopped it, <laughs> because you touched the thing, you did get Ooh, a spore, spores. another point of poison damage. All right, Lulu, it is your turn. Great, I'm going to uh, lift up my holy mace and kind of swing it around. Uh, but instead of hitting them, I'm going to cast fairy fire. I feel oh. like this is appropriate. Uh, a <laughs> bunch of motes of beautiful light, like almost like a sprinkler, shoot off of the mace. A dexterity saving throw, please, All from right. the creature. Yes, yes, yes. Can do. And it fails. Seven. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Then it is outlined in a radiant purple light. All attacks against it have advantage. Nice. Uh, and it illuminates in a 10-foot radius. I don't know if that really much matters, but there we go. I mean, go. now it that looks is like a, a super advanced Dragon Ball Z like form because it's got like this <laughs> weird purple outline, but then this like unnatural <laughs> darkness surrounding the purple outline. Ooh, so it cool. It is quite a scene. Absolutely. Magic eye poster. That mm. is a concentration spell. Okay. So just so... Uh, I have accountability on that, mm. uh, and that'll be the end of my turn. Excellent. Excellent. Flint. Okay. Um, from what I've seen so far, it seems like this thing's attacks are physical, basically. Like, they would kind of need yes. line of sight to hit me. Yes. Did I... Is that fair to Being glean? close to okay. it is dangerous. So I'm, gonna, yes. I'm a scary cat, and I'm going to yes. use... Yes. Um, so I'm going to, uh, go to, um, a bit of a distance. Okay. So I'm okay. a little bit out of reach. Um, so what, I don't know, whatever it's reaches okay. plus five feet or something. Right. Um, 
and then I'm also going to go ahead and scaredy cat, uh, use my, um, mold earth, uh -huh. um, cantrip to just pretty much oh. make like a whole <laughs> barrier around me. Um, that, uh, that has basically like a, like I'm lifting it all up. So I've, I've thought about this. So I'm lifting, lifting the, the earth up and making like, um, like, uh, it's kind of like, like a, a little donut? cage around me that I have several, like what? Um, yeah, kind of like a donut, I guess. Oh uh, yeah. Like a donut with there's uh there's at least two staircases to get out. It's about, it's yeah. like a five by five, wow. but I'm like five feet or four and a half or something anyway. So, um, so there's like little stair, a couple different staircases to get out in case I need to get out. Um, but also I can duck down and be like completely instant hidden or oh. show so it's up like your instant trench magic warfare missile or something if I want to. Yeah. Instant trench warfare. Yes. But also <laughs> like, ah, don't hurt me, you know? He's, earth, earth, preserve me is what I. Earth he's like a little me, gopher you know, that goes around. <laughs> okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not thrilled with that, but yes, it's an apt response. So, I, but I yeah. think a cantrip counts as my action. So I think that's all I do. I pretty much like ran and did that, and <laughs> I then love it. I love and it. then just for fun, I say, Perfect. "Be careful, everyone." <laughs> yes, <laughs> you're all doing a wonderful as you're job. Finishing that sentence and telling everybody to be careful, and they look at you, they they see out of the corner of their eye this thing moving ungodly fast for something so large. And so it moves to right where oh, no. uh, Fan and Lulu are, and they ah. are now underneath. They're now in the dark darkness, and it starts to shake. Oh, no. And, no! and all of these noxious spores start to fall from it and so both of you make a constitution saving throw mm. see if you can dodge out the way <laughs> oh no you're good in your i'm allergic but oh no fan and lulu gotta save fan I lulu got a five uh, Sixteen. do not do it what you got fan 16 works all right lulu you get you're gonna take only one point of damage but you're poisoned for a minute Copy that. You can make a saving throw at the end Oof. of each of your turns, ending it on a success. Yeah. And that yeah. is the enemy's turn, and what is your turn, means, What? Just disadvantage on attacks? Uh, disadvantage on attacks. Okay, and ability checks. well. Yep. And ability checks. Slash it, I guess. 19. All right. 19 definitely hits. Roll for damage. Um, yeah, you have advantage, uh, but yeah, if, if you want to just roll, see if you get a nat 20. Oh, hey. right. We'll get yeah, he does have advantage. Correct. Hey, that's my job to remind. Since it's my All right, mm -hmm. this thing is yeah. almost bloody. Almost bloody. Okay. Lulu. Almost saute. Almost, so almost squishy. Poison. Like, if I kick this thing with my boot as an unarmed attack, will that... Uh, that's a good question. That's... Yeah, that's fair. You got... Um, that's fair. Have you got any, you know, room between your boot and your greaves or whatever you're wearing? I mean, as long as, you know, your character would have all of that, all that skin covered, then I think you're fair. Yeah, the spores would just hit your leg okay. and then you could run back Let's out. Let's try it. I'll allow it. It's uh, believable. 17. That, that, that hits. To do four points of damage. All right. Nice. Excellent. It is bloody now. Perfect. Woo! It only has two tentacles. Good. And one of them is kind of below. All right, Lulu. For my turn, I would like to move from underneath the mushroom and dive into Scotty's gopher hole. Uh, does this promote attack of opportunity as I move from the mushroom's threatened range? Um. Yes. Yes, it does. Great. Roll it. I will. Uh, does a 14 hit? <laughs> no. Okay, then it does not Slap make those tentacles of out of the way. Lulu dives into the ghost <laughs> hole, lands on the ground, and goes, Oh, rip, rip. I'm allergic. Please repeat. And I'm going to cast your saving throw. <laughs> 
Uh, oh, thank sorry. you. I'm going to cast before I end mm -hmm. my turn Cure Wounds on myself. Oh, oh, oh. So I'm going to do a D8 plus mm. my Wisdom modifier. Great. That's five plus one because I have to share the wisdom. She's not that wise. Anyway, six points is good enough. And then I will do my save. Thank you. Mm. Oh, nat one. Oh, no, that does not do. Okay. <laughs> I'm still very poisoned. Yeah, you do your healing word and then you like <laughs> puke some blood up right afterwards. <laughs> You're like, it's fine. I normally do that. It's cool. <laughs> Gross. It's fine. <laughs> it's part the of the I gotta expurgate expurgate the evil yep All right. I usually would throw up especially <laughs> after the drinking alright that's the end of mine perfect Flint what are we doing okay so yep. I uh, I'm in my little gopher hole and um uh, I think I want to do magic Ooh. missile for the first time in my yeah. life to see if it's worth all the hubbub um Okay, wait. So how do I no do roll for uh, first? I roll a d twenty for attack, and then I'll do the just roll works. with the one d. Yeah, it always hits. Oh, that's baby. right. No roll. That's right. It just works. It's, it's, oh, it's well, gosh, I only get a d four. So okay, here we go. So I uh, so so anyway, so I see him, and uh, and Lulu just jumps in. I'm like, hey, cool. Hold on a second. And I shoot a little magic missile, and I roll a d four, which got a one. <laughs> Jealous ooh, ooh, plus ooh. one, so I did two damage. Wait, and, I a say, and I say, magic missile is more yeah. than one dart. A magic missile is three dart, surely. Well, no, because he's level. Oh, that's one. right. Yeah, yeah. So is it three, three darts, darts at level one. When you cast a spell right. using a spell uh, start of second level, no, I think, I think it is. I think it is. You create one more dart, but three darts is the ah. default. Are you doing that, Scotty? Great. That's right. All yeah. Right. No, I am doing that. Yeah. So yeah. So I rolled one d four, but I got a one. So I got a d one d four plus one. Mm -hmm. So I guess each dart is two. So I guess that Love would it. be then three. Two, two, two. So <laughs> technically, I say yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. You're there. riding a horse. And then I promptly poke Go my head right that. back down right. into the hole. We love it. Well, and I, and much, I grab my knees and I rock. How much and damage? Go, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Three d four plus three. So I guess it was one d four plus one. So I guess each each dart was two damage, but then there's but three instead darts. Of so I guess just one six damage. Multiplying? You can roll the d four three times. I mean, it's then... nine oh, points yeah. of damage. Oh, okay, I'll do that. Then. Roll. Oh, the next one was also a d one, <laughs> so that's exciting. What you get for being a coward. And the last one was a d three. So I guess it's two, two, and five. So no, two, two, and four. All right, eight. Plus, Eight oh, that is much Great. more powerful than I Plus thought it was. Okay, three, yes. Right? Okay. Was... okay, magic okay. missile. Okay. He already added it because he got one plus okay. one is two. One plus one is two. Yeah, I rolled a one, oh. a one. Sure. One plus two plus two plus one. Plus two plus one plus two plus one. Plus two plus one. Plus two plus one. Absolutely. Yeah, makes makes all sense. I'm following 100%. Right. Yeah. All right. Perfect. The nightcap is up next. And. Ooh, it's called a hmm. nightcap. That's fun. And night oh, a nightcap. Yeah, we all know about the nightcap. <laughs> right, Still out. Before though. your eyes, it blinks out of existence. What? I did it! <laughs> Wait, but is the existence yeah, the one that we just were asleep in? It is out of your field of view. But, Lulu, you feel your body get hit. And again, it's oh. the similar what happened last time, right? You can't see it, but you feel it. And gotcha. it does a 15 hit. Ooh, no, All it right. doesn't. So you can Oof, just you can, you can feel it kind of just go past. You can the wind hits your face a little bit and you it, kind of start to he's stir in the other place. from your from your sleep. And so He's uh, in the other place. I don't know how we'd get there, but we gotta wake up because he's in the other one. So you can try to wake up uh, by rolling a constitution roll at any time. Sweet. At any time? Because it's not my turn well, right now. during your turn. So. Sorry, it's during your turn. Great. At any Gotta time give it up to Fan. All right, and it is Fan's turn. I mm -hmm. Try to wake Perfect. up. All right. Cue that song. Uh, wake up. Wake <laughs> <20. laughs> up. Yeah. <laughs> it'll make up. Oh, that definitely does it. All right, so you wake up. 
and you see this care this 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 giant nightcap mushroom monster thing larger than life in front of you uh in the normal ass as much as it's normal ass fairy plane was waking up an action <laughs> and uh that no no so if you want to take an action you can you can take an action to wake another character up but you can also just take an action to do your turn if you want mm. Mm. decisions decisions teamwork check right <laughs> what do Kick i do ass. um <clears throat> Can I attack this thing and then forego my unarmed strike to wake one of my friends up as a bonus action? I'll allow it. Okay. Ooh, kind of generous. So I miss <laughs> with my... I mean, kicking your mushroom and kicking your friend is probably like... Yeah, the yeah, thing so I like get a... <laughs> Yeah, so I got a seven <laughs> to attack, which I assume doesn't do it, and I'm going. Nope. Doesn't do it. You have advantage. You hear Lou's voice from beyond I the ether. You have, have advantage. advantage. <laughs> so I got an eighteen to attack. To hit. All right, that hits. Lou with her alar doing a healing word while concentrating. It's amazing. Look at her. Look at her go. Mm -hmm. oh, so I I <laughs> six <laughs> points of damage and I guess I kick uh, who do I want to kick I guess I kick Lou because I'm kind of hoping she'll cure me <laughs> well You're if she's next, not in a donut buddy. too right mm -hmm. you, know, you got you got Donut Boy over there in his little hidey hole, so probably easier to yeah, yeah. kick Lou without falling over. <laughs> All right, Lou, so you <laughs> uh, go ahead and make a con throw with advantage to wake up. Lou, Lou. Uh, great, with advantage. Uh -huh. Lovely. Thank you. Beep, ba, boo, bop. That's what, I love that advantage because the first one was a <laughs> natural one. Now this dice is being retired because the next one Oof. was a seven. Oh, all right. You are sleepy sleeper soon. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, it is actually your turn. So if you want to try to, to yes. <laughs> shake yourself awake with fierce determination, it's like when you're having a night terror, like a sleep you know, yeah. paralysis dream, and you're just like, wake up, wake up. Focus up, mm -hmm. focus up. Twelve. Oh, does Will not do it? do it. Does not do um, it. You ow. are you are a sleepy sleeper son. All right. I'm a sleepy Hate sleeper son. Hate to see it. Uh since I'm still asleep, mm -hmm. uh I do still get a turn, but in the sleepy world, yes. right? Yep, yep, yep. Thank you very much. How does Flint look health wise? Uh Okay. Well you're fine. Uh, I think I have right. seven out of eight. Great. I, I haven't been hit since that I was the first one to get slapped. Okay. The, awesome. Great, great, great. Well, world just figured I'd ask, world. and I'm going to send a telepathic message to Fan. Be like, sorry about that. Really <laughs> trying to wake up. Just didn't sleep last night. Five more minutes. Anyway, just five keep more going. Minutes. You're doing a great job. I don't want to go to that thing. You. <laughs> you, go, you go to it without me. Yeah. I'll, I'll come later. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you got this. I'll come heal you in a second. That's the end of my turn. All right, Flint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I want yep, to try okay. to wake up, so I guess I do a constitution. Does not do. Saving throw. No. Nope. Ten plus two. It's twelve. Oh. I don't think I do it. So I have a turn. Um, I, I, one question that I guess I was gonna. I wasn't sure if I asked. Um, even once we once we breathed in the spores and and was able to see this dream creature, is the rest of the land the landscape all the same too? It's just we can just see a slightly different thing, or is like uh, suddenly we're not in a swamp yeah. anymore, or like the can... paths are in different spots, or it's just that you can see this creature. Yeah. Okay. So like it's so just... like did the did okay so the the mm -hmm. earth yes oh, sorry the earth I manipulated is also in the other okay um. But I guess I have something else to do. Um, I'm going to use <laughs> prestidigitation to um, unsoil my just pants. Just going to clean that up. As a personal and, thing. Uh, perfect. All right. Excellent. And it is back Can to the, the kid try to wake up? And the night. Uh, oh, yeah. Hey, 
base. Yeah, let's yeah. Can our resident rogue Ace of Base All try right. to play? Okay, go? I scream to up. Ace. And wake the Ace. other two mm -hmm. up. All right, he does it. So he so he goes and he kicks the other two. So go ahead and take another roll, both of you with advantage to try to wake up. Ah, uh, I love it. Kind and generous. Got a reward ingenuity. That's a 15. 15 does 15. it. 17 does it. All right. Everybody is awake. 17. Kick me again and I'll take your leg, kid. I mean, uh, thank <laughs> you. This night, ah, this there it nightcap is. seeing everybody awake, it looks <laughs> around and disappears. What? Like disappears like it goes back to the sleepy zone? No, like disappears like, yeah, though, so deep. Like meta gives game, up? Meta game notes like it it runs away. Ah, uh, like it runs away. No, it doesn't. That's yeah, no, right. Okay, okay. Just okay. Chase and go I was to gonna sleep, say I breathe the thing again. Oh, okay. no, it's not that. It runs. Away. This is like this is its yeah running away. Yeah, and absolutely. stay out. Yeah, high fives. Good Woo. job. Yay, you guys yay, made yay, it. There we go. <laughs> All I'm right. Close one. Uh, fan, come here. Come here. Let me <laughs> let me put Thank my little holy you. hands on you. Come here. <laughs> there we go. Good job. Way so to save the healing. day with all them chickens. Yeah. All it's right. A eight. That nice. is what I need. Healing for you, sir. It. There we go. Heal it up. You get a little shiny. You a little radiant. That's all. Uh, that's all. Uh, Lulu <laughs> slots, gang. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll get to know. Okay, this rest. Um, hmm. No, you're good. Wait. So we. Oh, uh, I was yes. gonna say we we chopped off one of its tentacles. Yeah, you want to right? Up? Make some food. Is the tentacle still there? Up? Oh well, I was I was gonna see if there was. Well, I was going to see if there was loot or anything to do with it, but I suppose if there's food, sure, like we can take some of the rations. Yeah. Uh, Lou already gave away one well, of the rest. I suppose us. that makes sense. Ooh, shiitake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yum, yum, yum. Add that to you. I want to figure out if we can find where it's been keeping mm. these other kids. Hopefully they're still alive. I try to say that kind of away from Ace. That's true. I mean, do we think the mushroom thing? What? Yeah. Were we seeing mushroom spores? Is that what you were describing around no. sleeping kids? No. And you and Lulu saw <clears throat> uh, flittering insect-like things. Oh. When you first okay, came through. Okay, so more fairy energy. So yes. that mushroom mm. wasn't taking the kids. That was just the peril of the landscape. Yes. Absolutely. Excellent. Correct. Yeah, our guard Indeed. dog, absolutely. So we're still on the hunt. Or a guard dog or something, yeah. 